Hi there. In this video, I want to give you the three themes that must be screaming loud in your business plan if you want to assure yourself that you definitely have a good business plan and also if you want to impress investors that you have a good business plan. Hi there, my name is Bumi Tokon. If you're here for the first time, do subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, let's get started straight away. Number one, what are the three themes that must be screaming loud in your business plan <laughs> to assure yourself that you have a good idea and also to impress other people? Number one is proof of concept. Now, there are generally two types of businesses that anybody can form. Um, and I'm going to come on to that in a moment. But just thinking about this, what are the types of proof of concept that you could display or that you could have? Number one is you've generated a certain amount of sales. Maybe you plan to sell 10,000 units of a particular product and you can show that you have actually sold a hundred products in the last two months or last three months, then, you know, you have a proof of concept right there. Maybe something like downloads. You may say, well, I've got this product and it's going to have, um, I've got a website and it's going to have, I don't know, a million downloads a month. And in the past um, two months, we've had 10,000 downloads or whatever. Downloads is another one. Uh, subscribers is another one. And you can think for yourself, what can you show others and yourself that you have a proof of concept? That's number one. The second thing is type or tests and research. Test and research. There's a huge difference between tests and research. People talk about research. They say, well, I've researched that people in this neighborhood buy this many houses. Or I've researched that a lot of people within the ages of 35 and 45, they buy this type of clothing. Or I've researched. All that is just research. It's not test. That doesn't assure you that people will buy your own products because you've not tested it. You've just researched. That's a huge difference right there. I would say to people, yeah, you may have done some research that shows a certain number of people would purchase uh, a certain kind of house or a certain number of people will buy a certain kind of laptop or whatever, but will they buy yours? What is the test that you have carried out to show that they're going to buy yours? And now this is where the MVP comes in. This is the minimum viable product. If you read the book by Eris Reese, uh, called uh, Lean Startup. I suggest you go read it. You'll find the link in the description um, in this video. Read that book because it will show you how to create an MVP. That's a minimum viable product. Have you created a minimum viable product that you have tested in the market to show that you have proof of concept? I'm telling you, when you have proof of concept, it gives you that assurance, that confidence, that boldness that your idea would definitely work. All right, that needs to be screaming loud in your business plan. Number two is your passion. Your passion must be screaming loud in your business plan. Like I was going to say earlier, there are two types of businesses that people run. Number one is a passion-based business or a hobby-based business. And secondly, is an opportunity-based business. An opportunity-based business is something like Virgin does, or you know, you might look at even now Amazon is like an opportunity-based business. However, for most people, we are good at running passion-based business, which means we like a particular subject or theme, and so we give our all to it. You need to display that in your business plan. Does your business plan show yourself and everyone else that you have a passion for this type of business? What is the proof? Well, you can have proof of passion by displaying that you've actually maybe created a lot of videos about that topic. You have taught a lot of people about that topic. In fact, you've got certain results 
as a result of um, you actually displaying that passion or giving that passion or exhibiting that passion to others. So if you want to set up a nursery, for example, you could actually show that, well, everybody in the neighborhood are always asking you to look after their children. And in fact, you've created books for children. You've created, uh, uh, you know, studies for children of that age group. You know, whatever it is, you have shown that you have a passion for that business. That needs to be screaming loud in your business plan. All right. The third thing that needs to be screaming loud in your business plan is your narrow niche, your narrow niche. Like I said, if you watch my videos, you will notice I've said this so many times, and I gotta say it again. People say, oh, uh, women between the ages of 25 to 55 will buy my products. That's just a nonsense. No, not every woman between the age of 20, I don't care what you sell, not every woman between the age of 25 and 55 will buy your product. It doesn't work like that. That just shows that you've not tested anything and it just shows that you've not narrowed your niche. You've got to narrow your niche and show three things. Number one, what kind of connections do you have? How connected are you to the group you want to sell to? Is it because you have worked in that environment, you've worked with those type of women or those type of men, or you've worked with those type of young people or whatever it is. Number two, what's, what are you doing that has displayed or that has shown that you actually understand the problems they're going through and you are bringing to market the well-deserved solution to that problem that people are willing to pay for? You can have solutions that is like a vitamin and a vitamin is different. <laughs> a, a vitamin is very different from a painkiller. A vitamin says, oh, you can have it whenever and it's a long-term thing and you know, it'll work. I'm not against vitamins. I take vitamins. I believe they work. However, that's more of a long-term game. If you have a painkiller that deals with it now, people want painkillers. They just want that problem to go away. You've got to give them a painkiller. If you have a painkiller solution, people are going to buy it. If you want your products to be delivered to you next day, you've got to get Prime on Amazon. That's just the way it goes because you want your products in <laughs> knocking on your door the next day. So you go buy stuff on Amazon. Once you've narrowed your niche in terms of you showing that you're connected to a particular group of people, because like I said, maybe you've worked in that environment of you or you created a product for the environment or whatever, and you've shown that you are bringing in a solution, then the next thing is to create a profile for your ideal customer. Who is your ideal client? Because when you create a profile for your ideal client, it will help you to understand how to reach that particular client. So you might say, well, my ideal client could be a 40 year old living in a flat or a house that has one or two children that works in a particular kind of job, that earns a particular amount of money, that drives a particular car, that is found on you know, WhatsApp and Facebook. You know, you create a profile of that person and then you can market directly to those type of individuals. So in other words, the three things, let me conclude by saying, by reminding you again, the three major themes that needs to be screaming out in your business plan is number one, proof of concept. Number two, your passion. And number three, the narrow niche that you have chosen to get involved in. All right. In the description below, you're going to have the book by Eris Reese, but Eric Reese, but uh, I also want to give you a link to my Udemy course on how to write business plans. So I'm going to put two links there. You can pick whatever one you want and you can either learn it in one hour or take a much more robust course that will take you quite a few hours to learn that. So in the description box, check that out. Also, please subscribe to the channel, like it and share it. And I hope that you have gained a lot from today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. God bless.